So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video. So guys, this is the next story. A Marks and Spencer security guard is facing a long prison sentence today after a unanimous jury found him guilty of killing a homeless man he suspected of stealing meat. The jury took four hours of deliberation to convict Sabia Trabelsi, who's 44, of manslaughter. Trabelsi had landed a knockout blow to the head of the homeless man Jason Page near the supermarket in Lower Ely, near Reading in Berkshire, on the 31st of March last year, the court had been told. Mr. Page fell to the ground, hitting his head so hard he never recovered from his injuries and died in hospital. Trabelsi had been hired to work at the MS in Lower Early following a spate of thefts of expensive meat and alcohol. Trabelsi, who told police I was frustrated and no, I shouldn't have done it, was captured on CCTV delivering the fatal blow to Mr. Page. After he was arrested, Trabelsi tried to claim that the 51 year old Mr. Page fell over because he was drunk and that's why he hit his head and denied throwing a punch at him. However, CCTV footage seen by the jury showed him being punched. Jurors convicted Trabelsi of manslaughter and perverting the course of justice and the manslaughter conviction means he could be jailed for at least eight years. The store manager, Elliot Cripps, who followed Trabelsi out of the shop as he chased Mr Page, was cleared of perverting the course of justice and walked free from court. Judge Amjad Nawaz rejected a plea by Trabelsi Defence Counsel for him to be granted bail to put his affairs in order before being imprisoned and he was sent to the cells beneath the Crown Court. So he's going to be sentenced in June. While summing up their case, the prosecution said that Trabelsi had told police in one of his several interviews I was frustrated and no, I shouldn't have done it. The jury of eight men and four women retired on Wednesday to consider whether Trabelsi was guilty of manslaughter and they heard that the fatal punch happened on Trabelsi's last working day for Marks and Spencers. 30 minutes before the shop was to shut, the security guard chased Mr Page out of the shop after he and an accomplice were seen on CCTV brazenly filling up a bag with expensive meat and grabbing a box of beer on the way out. The jury was told that Trabelsi carried on chasing Mr Page towards a nearby BP garage and Mr Cripps, who was the store manager, followed behind in an attempt to grab back the bag of meat. The CCTV played to the jury showed Mr Page being wrestled to the ground as the store manager managed to get the meat back from him. But when Mr Page got back to his feet, Trabelsi delivered the knockout blow, causing him to fall backwards and crash onto the pavements and he died shortly after his injury. I just want to say rest in peace, Mr Page. My condolences go out to your family. Trabelsi told jurors that Mr Page had threatened to stab him with a needle when he landed the punch and he also argued he slapped Mr Page rather than punching him. In a new story coming from Lancashire Ways, a smirking knifeman who stabbed his former friend three times after they got into an argument while queuing at Boots Pharmacy has been jailed. James Smith had walked into a branch in Strickland Gate in Kendall and found himself in a queue at the pharmacy counter with a man he knew very well. The victim had known Smith from their time at college and had given the 29-year-old a place to stay in October 2022 when he was struggling at the cost of £50 a week. However, the pair had fallen out when on January the 16th, Smith had refused to pay for six weeks and then moved out, telling the man he would be not giving him any money owed. The encounter in Boots two days later was the first time the men had seen each other since the man asked again about the money he was owed. Smith not only refused to pay the money, but mocked and goaded his former friend regarding the death of someone close to him. The man then struck Smith in the face, starting a tussle between the two inside the boot store. The court heard how Smith grabbed the man in a headlock, trying to drag him to the floor. When he was unsuccessful, the man attempted to walk away but was pursued by Smith, who then produced a flicky from his pocket, opened it and leapt at the man. Smith swung the knife some six times towards the man's hip, chest and face. Three of the stabbing attacks connected, one to his hip, one to his back, close to his shoulder and another to his cheek, and then three others narrowly missed. Smith then calmly stood and watched the man bleeding heavily on the floor before turning and walking away, leaving the store via the rear entrance. The attack was captured on Boots' store CCTV camera and happened in front of shoppers. Police were swiftly on the scene with officers helping to treat the badly injured victim of the knife attack when Smith returned, was pointed out and he was arrested. The initial prognosis of the victim was not good and he was taken from the scene via air ambulance. However, it was fortunate that none of the stab wounds were to prove life-threatening 
and he was receiving numerous stitches for each of his injuries, he was discharged for hospital. Upon arrest, Smith was found in possession of a knife, and in his police interview, Smith refused to answer any questions. However, he admitted to the events at court. So James Smith appeared at Carlisle Crown Court for sentencing after previously admitting offences of wounding with intent to do GBH and possession of a bladed article in the public place. He was sentenced to three years and nine months in prison. Acting Detective Inspector Lee Brumpton of Cumbria Police said, any assault involving a knife that has the potential to end in tragedy and a loss of life. This violent and senseless attack could easily have resulted in death of the victim and Smith standing in court charged with murder. Cumbria is one of the safest places in the country to live and work and there is absolutely no justification for someone deciding to leave their home whilst armed with a weapon. I would like to thank all those who respond to the incident calmly and quickly, resulting in the victim receiving immediate medical care and the offender being swiftly arrested within minutes of the attack, including the paramedics, the staff at Boots and the customers inside the store, as well as the police officers who not only apprehended Smith, but also administered first aid at the scene. And in a new story coming from London Ways, two men have been jailed after detective sees cocaine with an estimated street value of more than £14 million in West London. Richard Johnson is 47 of Sheffield and Kamil Sololowski, who is a Polish national, was sentenced on Friday the 5th of May. The pair were arrested after officers witnessed a box containing some of the drugs being transferred between a lorry and a van in a slip road near Northolt shortly after midnight on the 25th of November 2022. The box was found to contain 20 kilos of cocaine. Another six boxes were found in the lorry which arrived in the UK through the Channel Tunnel about three hours earlier. A total of 141 kilos were recovered. Johnson and Solowski attempted to run away but were chased by officers on foot and arrested nearby. They were found to have been messaging on encrypted devices which they had used to arrange the handover. Johnson had travelled to London from the north of England. Detective Constable Leon Yeo from the Met's Specialist Crime Command said, I am certain these drugs would have ended up in the hands of dangerous criminal gangs and it would have resulted in violent crime and antisocial behaviour. In another story, coming from Wales, a drugs gang boss was at the heart of a sophisticated Class A operation supplying heroin and cocaine in Gwent and Cardiff. Zach Gibbs was a member of an organised crime group running a profitable drugs line with more than 100 customers. The 28-year-old was responsible for sending text bombs to customers and organising drug runners to deliver heroin and cocaine throughout South Wales. Gibbs was caught red-handed in the city road area of Cardiff last Christmas with 10 wraps of cocaine worth £300 in a stolen Mitsubishi Outlander. He was arrested after a foot chase with police, recovering a mobile phone with the incriminating evidence he tried to dump on a shelf inside a shop. The prosecutor, Thomas Stanway, told Newport Crown Court, officers linked the defendant to a drugs line that used his alias, Zane. On the 110 days that the line was active, 87 of those days saw a bulk or text bomb sent and on occasion to over 100 contacts. The Crown says this demonstrates that there was a significant customer base. Gibbs from Cardiff pleaded guilty to being concerned in the making an offer to supply heroin, being concerned in the making an offer to supply cocaine and possession of cocaine with intent to supply. He was jailed for 30 months back in 2018 for possession of cocaine with intent to supply. The defence representing Gibbs revealed how his client had started using drugs as a child and had become sucked into drug dealing to pay for his own habit. He said his late mother passed away when he was only 14 years of age and the difficulties he experienced growing up are well documented in the pre-sentencing report, which makes it for a very sad reading. The judge recorded Greg Bull Casey told Gibbs, you were at the heart of quite a sophisticated Class A drug dealing operation. I accept that you were not the prime mover of what was taking place, but you played a major and significant role. I accept that there were people above you, but there were also people below you. You took instruction and you gave it. You were responsible for, amongst other things, sending a large number of what is known as text bombs to potential customers. The judge added, I have no doubt that a profitable drug dealing business was established. I know that on one occasion during your enterprise, you were using a stolen motor car, which had false number plates, in order to further your dealing. So Gibbs was sentenced to four years and six months and is set to face a proceeds of crime hearing. Guys, here's a few stories coming from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC.
keep it locked, keep it real.